What is up you guys? This is Mini Superheroes Today. Hey everybody, Jonathan here, aka Mini Superheroes Today, and I put on a dress shirt because today is a very special day. Today's the day that the channel passed 50,000 subscribers, and that means you are one of them. If you're not, go ahead and hit subscribe now. But to everybody that is one of those 50k, thank you guys so much for being here and being a part of the journey. I wanted to do something really special that I haven't done on the channel yet before. In previous videos, I've gone ahead and done a room tour, then a minifigure tour, as well as a house tour, but there's been a lot of changes since the 40k house tour, and I kind of want to do a little bit of a highlight reel to start out this video today and kind of show you some of the really cool new things since the last time, but also I've taken the entire basement of my house and turned that into a Lego room, which nobody has seen yet before. So this will be the debut of that, but for right now, let's take a look at some of the highlights of my collection. So here we have the PS4 Spider-Man. This was a 2019 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Very, very limited. And of course, we all know and love this Spider-Man suit, so I'm very, very happy to have this. My friend Justin Warner from Marvel, uh, he's on Marvel's YouTube channel as their cook extraordinary does their food content. He sold me this at a great price, and I'm super excited to add this to my collection. So here we have my Raimi Spider-Man collection. Now, this isn't all of it because there's a lot of the sets and they're all spread out throughout my museum, we should say. Uh, but these are some of my favorites, especially the ones that I think display particularly well, especially the origins here from 2003. It's the origins of both Spider-Man and the Green Goblin, one of my absolute favorite sets ever, let alone favorite Spider-Man sets. Below, we've kind of got a mixed match of boxes and great sets from both the first Spider-Man movie and the second Spider-Man movie from 2002 to 2004. These sets are worth a lot of money. In fact, the figures alone are worth crazy amounts, but they're very cool to have all displayed here, and they were a big part of my childhood, so it's very exciting to open my door to the office every day and see these as the first thing I see every day when I get started with making videos for you guys. All right, so these shelves have a lot of personal value to me. Uh, of course, there's a lot of Lego value there too, but these figures here are all of my Star Wars figures from when I was growing up. We've got all the original yellow flesh tone, you know, all that great stuff from back in the day. Even got Jango Fett, so really, really cool stuff there. Love my old Star Wars figures. Next to those, we have three incredibly rare pieces. Now, if you're watching this in the future, of course the Marvel mechs are at least slated to come out April 1st, 2022, but these Marvel mechs were sent to me early by LEGO, and the idea was that, you know, I was supposed to be able to review them, but they got delayed due to some kind of stability issue in the sets. Um, it appears that it was something to do with the hip joints, but regardless, Lego said that I was not allowed to actually review these, even though they sent them to me to review, again, because they got delayed and all that stuff. So these have not for sale stickers on the bottom of them. That's what makes them rare. And, you know, they'll always be a piece of Lego history when we look back 10, 20, 50 years from now at these sets that got delayed. So just kind of interesting there. Up here, we've got a lot of figures that, again, just have personal value to me. None of them are particularly super rare or anything, but they're just figures that I grew up with as a kid or customs I made that I really like. Um, we do have Kobe Bryant back there, the sole Lego set that had Kobe Bryant in it, with the exception of the NBA Ultimate Arena, which also had an uh, alternate jersey for Kobe. But regardless, it's very, very cool to have him there. Then we also have my Funko Pop next to that that was custom made for me. Very, very cool. Uh, we've got a brick heads over there that I built of myself. And then we also have the Lego system set 5918, which is the Scorpion Tracker. And this was my first Lego set ever. So it's really cool to have it complete with the box. And while it's not the greatest set of all time, it's one of the best sets of all time to me because it opened the door for me to do what I do today here on the channel. So very, very cool with that one and lots of cool stuff in there. If you guys have any questions, of course, you can drop those in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. So this is a Lego store display. Now, as you can see, uh, it's got DC on the left side here and Marvel on the right. Now, I love this for a multitude of reasons. 
First and foremost, this is from the year 2012, which was the debut for both LEGO DC and LEGO Marvel. So it's cool that it has all the debut figures in it, but it's also cool because it's got DC and Marvel. How often do you ever see both brands advertised side by side in the same item, I guess? So I think it's really cool to have something that is officially licensed from my favorite hobby, covering my two favorite themes and all in one product. It's pretty amazing. So this is really cool. My friend Brix O'Brien sold this to me and I've done a video on it, but you haven't seen it in this context yet. So this is the Iron Man store display from Captain America Civil War 2016. The only LEGO store in the world that I could find that did big banners like this is the Rockefeller Center LEGO store, which has since moved locations, but not really relevant to this. Anyways, I would love to find the Captain America for it someday, but Iron Man is still pretty cool. It displays so well, and as you can see, I mean, it's massive. It's got to be maybe eight feet tall. I don't know. I'm terrible with measurements, but it is very cool. It's basically a big, like, piece of plastic that's translucent with Iron Man screen printed onto it. It's incredibly cool, and it's the kind of weird thing that I love, love, love to collect. So, of course, it's got to be in the highlight reel. I had the amazing opportunity to meet Stan Lee twice in my life. I met him once randomly in an airport and another time at a Comic-Con. And although I didn't get an autograph either time, I did buy this earlier this year. It is a Stan Lee autographed Lego Avengers promotional piece for the Avengers video game. So you guys know that I love collecting Lego advertising pieces and posters and promotional things. So to have something like that that's pretty rare in its own right signed by Stan Lee is like the perfect, perfect piece for my collection. So this video is about all my favorite things in my collection. And of course, this is one of them. This is the Bricker Builds life-sized Captain America shield. It has almost 3,000 pieces to it. And you basically build it in layers. So you start with this outermost layer, add a layer, add a layer, and you go the whole way around like a big circle and just keep building up until you put the last stud on the star. It was an awesome build, and I built it with my friend Brandon Davis from comicbook.com. And as if all of that isn't cool enough, you can also lift it up off the wall. There are handles on the back, and you can actually wear it. So I'll put it on now but it's really an amazing piece. And of course you can order one. You can get the instructions, build it yourself, or you can get the bricks from Bricker Builds. If that isn't awesome, I don't know what is. All right, so I only use official Lego stuff in my photos and videos now, but my first ever Lego post was actually with this knockoff Ant-Man on my Instagram. And he's pretty much fallen apart over the years, but it's pretty cool to have the first figure that I ever created content with still here. So, you know, I don't use off-brand stuff anymore, but, um, you know, it's just a cool piece of history. Here we have not one, not two, but three figures from the opening of the Nashville Lego store, which of course is my local Lego store. Now, I didn't live here in 2012, but I bought a collection uh, maybe three or four years ago, and I was as I was sifting through all the bulk brick, I found all three of these in the bottom of the bin. They're incredibly rare. In fact, it's pretty hard to ever buy figures from these store openings just because there's not a lot of them out there for sale. So to have these from my local Lego store is pretty dang awesome. You know that the channel is all about customs, and this is the first custom I ever made. This is Indiana Jones and his outfit from the beginning of the Temple of Doom, and I used it, I made it by using whiteout and sharpies. Pretty wild. Uh, this figure here will always live on my shelves because I got clowned so hard with this. I paid like $40 for this on eBay back when it was a quote-unquote Comic-Con exclusive. And literally the day after I made a video about paying $40 for it, Lego announced that they were doing a $5 poly bag with that figure in it. So, you know, that was a pretty big loss on my end. But next to that, we have the Iron Man Mark 43 from the Ultimate Collector Series style Hulkbuster. Just a cool figure. These are the Mac Daddies, though. 
This is the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern and Dark Knight Batman from the Comic-Con exclusives. So each of those were Comic-Con exclusives. Incredibly rare. I don't actually know how many of them were made. I should ask my friend Rarest Lego minifigures over on Instagram how many of each of those there are. I heard one time that there was a thousand of each, but I don't know if that's true or not. But anyways, they are both incredibly rare. But even more rare than that, this is truly the rarest figure I own. This is the Toy Fair 2012 Captain America figure. This came in a pair with an Iron Man figure, and those two were the very first Lego Marvel figures ever made. So it's incredibly rare, and there's only 125 of those out there, and you're looking at one of them right now. Right here, this is a clone brand Mr. Gold. I don't have a real Mr. Gold, but I bought a collection and that was in there, so I just thought it was funny to keep. These are two customs that uh, I collaborated on some designs with, and they are both of Gary Vaynerchuk from VaynerMedia. Uh, he was a big inspiration for me and what I do in marketing and video content creation, and I'm very grateful that I get to write for his pop culture company, 1.37 p.m. now. So he went from being a in, uh, huge inspiration to somebody that, you know, it provides me yet another platform to create on, and I'm very, very grateful for that. So these are just some cool autographs. I can't remember if I ever showed these off. Uh, this is David Hasselhoff, who, of course, made a cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And this Ant-Man and the Wasp comic book is signed by Paul Rudd and Hannah John Kamen, who played Ghost in Ant-Man and the Wasp. I met Paul Rudd, Hannah John Kamen, and uh, David Hasselhoff at the Ant-Man and the Wasp premiere. I should really make a video about that experience someday, but I was at the premiere. I got to meet pretty much the entire cast, and it was super cool. One other cool autograph, Mark Ruffalo. Can't go wrong. So now we're in my Lego City room, so let's take a quick overview at everything going on down here, because of course, there's a lot to see. So I absolutely loved this set as a kid. This is 6210 Java Sail Barge. It was so cool with how you could pull the doors down and Jabba was inside. Of course, you got Boba Fett, the Sarlacc. You know, we've had similar sets, you know, more modern, but I do love this one all these years later. So as you guys know, I love Lego store displays. This is a metal U-shaped display. This would have been maybe a Target or something like that. Popped up for $15 on Facebook Marketplace. Just couldn't say no. Right above it is a really cool Lego Ghostbusters sign from 2016. Even though that movie is pretty trash, it is pretty cool that it doesn't necessarily say it's the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. But uh, yeah, that's a cool store display as well. I had all of these sets as a kid. These are the 2006 era Lego Batman boxes. Absolutely incredible and pretty valuable these days too. So I'm a big fan of boxed sets. I love sealed stuff or loose stuff that is complete with the box. So these are just some of the things I've picked up over the years. Most of them I did have as a kid, but other ones were just some deals were just too good to pass up. So this is my Lego city, the city with no name as of yet, just haven't decided what it's going to be. But we'll start over here in the front right corner. Now we've got a beach scene going on here. We've got, you know, a little beach camper van. Fun fact, this was the first thing I ever worked with Lego on. I created some marketing videos for this wave of creator sets. So just kind of cool. Uh, Got to immortalize it here in my city. This was way before I was in the Lego Ambassador Network. Almost four years before, if you could believe that. Anyways, as we move along here, we've got lots of people enjoying fun in the sun at the beach. We've got some beach games going on here. Got some, uh, you know, girls soaking up the sun, if you will. Got a little sandcastle build going on here. And now he's extending it, so it's going to be even bigger. That's awesome. I always love this ice cream truck set. However, the ice cream truck is going to go pretty soon. I'm actually going to build a concert stage right here with this building as the backdrop. And I built the Lego Beach Boys to put right there. Beach Boys are my favorite band along with the Beatles, so I thought that'd be a really fitting thing there. Over here, we've got a little street market with some food. I custom built all of that. Not that it's super, super impressive, but, you know, not all builds have to be. So I'm really big into cars. I just love going to car shows. I have gone pretty much my whole life, so I figured it'd be cool to have a little car show going on here with some Speed Champion sets. As we move across the street, you can see we've got the detective's office here. We've got the corner garage. 
We've got the bookstore right there and the living quarters of the bookstore, if you will, moved across the street. Uh, I love that you could take those two apart and it helped with the math, I suppose you could say, of my city with the spacing of the buildings and stuff, so definitely a good fit there. We've got the Grand Emporium there, one of the more rare Lego sets as far as the modulars are concerned. Got a little gas station over here. This is probably going to go pretty soon though because just running out of room and technically if my Lego City patrons ever needed gas, they could get it down at the corner garage gas pumps over here. All right, so from the Grand Emporium, we move over here, and we've got Avengers Tower. Now, this thing is absolutely massive. I'll turn the camera a little bit so you can see how huge it is. There's a minifigure on the street, so you can see it's just absolutely massive. Now, there is a natural divide in it, because from here up is the 2020 Avengers Tower, and basically from here up is the actual set, and this part I mocked. But the whole bottom part here was actually built by a friend of mine who ended up selling me pretty much all of his Lego Marvel collection when he was getting out of it. So shout out to Nash. Uh, I'm pretty sure he'll be watching this. So, so you know, it's all here, Nash. I haven't taken it apart, but you can see each floor actually has something going on, like an arc reactor up here. We've got a little party room over here. Got the uh, Iron Legion with the Endgame suits in there. Got a little Tony Stark office area in here. Got a Hall of Armors in there. Pretty much every Iron Man armor released up to about 2018 or so is in there, which is quite cool. Got a little uh, Iron Man workshop and then some garage space on the bottom. Got a little toy store back there. This part is definitely a work in progress. And in a perfect world, I actually wanted to have the whole city done for you guys for this video, but to be honest, half the fun of LEGO is the process of getting all this stuff figured out, and I didn't want to rush it, so you're seeing it as it exists right now. So one of the fun things about your LEGO city is getting the layout done right. I love putting some of these creator three-in-one buildings over here. Not all of them are three-in-one, but they just mesh so well, especially for like a smaller little area. I tried to, you know, do the layout and stuff like this of Venice Beach and Santa Monica Pier. It just reminds me of some great times I've had there over the years. But as we come here, you can see there's a little park along the exterior with all these green base plates. I put a lot of little bag, like poly bag type builds here. Of course, we've got Emmett here. We've got a little news interview going on over here. So all kinds of fun, lively things are going on in the park of the city, which still has no name. So on the corner here, we have the brick bank. And when I'm planning out the city, I had to be very strategic which corner buildings went where because I don't want anything to be too covered up. So of course, we put the brick bank here on the corner. Great set. And in 2022, I actually want to start reviewing these modulars because I've actually never reviewed a modular on my channel as of this video. So coming kind of catty corner, we have the Ghostbusters Firehouse, one of my all-time favorite sets. Definitely, definitely cool. And, um, you know, we've got some scenery going on around it. I've never even reviewed this set. It's probably overdue for that. But uh, yeah, I'll get around to that sometime this year as well. But perhaps my all-time favorite set across the street is the Daily Bugle. Now, there's not much I can say about this that hasn't already been said on the channel. It is a superhero collector fan's dream. So many great minifigures, so many great Easter eggs. It's just an incredible set all this time later. It's barely even been out a year at this point, but still just an incredible set. And you should check out my review on it if you haven't already. So moving from the Daily Bugle, right below it, we have my custom Sanctum Sanctorum. This was built using only two Sanctums. We'll look at it more here in a minute. But next door, we have the Avengers Mansion. And next door to that, we have the Arkham Asylum, which is an actual official Lego set. So let's take a look at the insides of these three now. All right, so this is the Sanctum Sanctorum, and as mentioned, this is a mock that I built using only pieces from two copies of the Infinity War Sanctum Sanctorum set. You know, here on my channel, a lot of what I do is purest custom minifigures, where I build figures using only existing pieces. So I wanted to try a build that was like, hey, what if I did a build using only parts that you could get in a very specific set? I love the way that this turned out. It's one of my favorite builds I've ever done in my 26 years of life, and I love it to this day. It's just always awesome to show and tell you guys about. 
Now, not as well done, if I dare say so, as the Doctor Strange uh, side, but I do really love the Avengers Mansion. I jam-packed it with all of the accessories and cool printed and stickered pieces from Avengers sets from over the years, as well as the duplicates of Avengers sets I've collected, you know, getting another Ant-Man here and there, or another Iron Man here and there, so... I really love making this look lived in. As you can tell, a lot of the pieces came from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom estate set, the Lockwood estate. And, uh, you know, it's just a very cool, you know, mock all these years later, but it's just cool to kind of show here once again. All right, so this is the Grand Hotel, the very first Lego modular, and this thing is worth like $1,200 now. Now, it's not 100% complete, but it is dang close. I bought a collection maybe two years ago now. Man, time is so weird these days, but I bought a collection at least two years ago, and at the bottom of the collection, I found a lot of the pieces for this, and I went through and reassembled it and got it pretty dang close to complete. So it's really rare. It's one that I could never afford otherwise, and I'm very, very grateful I crossed paths with it. Next to it, fittingly, is the big anniversary set, Assembly Square. I love this set. It's jam-packed with so many details. Unfortunately, I didn't get to build it because I bought it from Facebook Marketplace where it was already built, but in some ways, there's a certain beauty to that. You know, somebody probably had a lot of fun building this, and, uh, you know, now I get to continue that on in my collection where it'll always be enjoyed. Next to that, we have the Palace Cinema. Now, my mom got me this one year, I believe for Christmas, if I'm not mistaken, but definitely a very, very cool set and one I'm super, super excited to have in my city. Now, as you can see, not all of the streets are super polished, right? A lot of them have the tiles on there to make them flat, but until I'm 100% happy with my city, I don't wanna lock anything down too hard. So we've got some park space back there, and just like any good city, when we run out of space with our normal buildings, we're just gonna chop down the park and put more buildings in. <laughs> but I love the camping scene going on in the back. There's so much life going on in this park, and it's really, really fun. Speaking of parks, the last thing to look at is the theme park. Now, I'm kind of building it in a way that the Disney train station is the way to get into the park, so, you know, in my imagination, you would have to have your ticket to go through here. Then, of course, that would bring you into the theme park where if you wanted to, you could ride the Disney Railroad. You could ride the roller coaster, which is such a great set. I'm so grateful Lego sent this to me to review and make content with. And last but not least, we have the Creator Expert Ferris Wheel in the back. Now, there are more ride sets. There's a carousel. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Hopefully I'll get those someday in the future, but until then, the theme park will be a work in progress and things will continue to grow. Now, Lego isn't the only thing I collect. A lot of these are my original Spider-Man toys from the early 2000s. Some of the rare ones are like Peter Parker on the pizza bike. Who would have ever guessed all these years later it would be such a meme? But I've got all these great figures sealed. I've got even more. And like I said, you know, you can't get everything out in time, and part of the process and the enjoyment is getting this stuff up, up at my own pace. So, you know, there's some really, really great and rare figures here, and I've got even more, but maybe by the time I hit 60k, I can come back and show you guys a little bit more of this stuff. All right, guys, well, thanks for coming along on this awesome tour and highlight reel of my collection. But more important than that, thank you for being one of the 50,000 subscribers on this channel. I know we'll be hitting 100K before long, and we've got a great year of content coming up with all of the great new LEGO superhero sets coming out, all of the awesome Disney Plus shows. We've got DCEU movies coming. It's going to be a great year, so be sure to stick around for all of that, and I'll see you guys next time. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. You should hit like and subscribe down below for more LEGO content from me because I post just about every single day. You'll be up to date on all the latest in LEGO, so why not join my community and hit subscribe now.